Jalen Lucas back to receive the opening kick. He took the opening kick in last year's Rutgers Indiana game to the house. Here we go from Memorial Stadium in Bloomington. And Jalen Lucas will not have a shot at doing what he did last year as that's through for a touchback. So Brendan Sorsby started the season opener in this stadium. So pretty much the team that doesn't that doesn't turn it over will have the best shot to win. And as Sorsby's first snap after retaking the job is complete. And unless they bring pressure, much like Indiana, they don't get pressure. And first carry for Christian Turner, out ahead for a first down. And the top playmaker for Indiana is Jalen Lucas. He stutters out to the edge and is out of bounds. Guys in the scout for Rutgers at running back and wide receiver. This is Christian Turner and breaking into the secondary and at the 50 yard line he's pushed out making changes at those spots. Sorsby's second throw goes underneath and that's caught by James Bamba and he's into the second line. On this opening drive for Indiana Sorsby quick hit out to Lucas and he is smothered and Powell making very quick decisions right now for Rutgers. Sorsby off the play fake sideline shot. And it's dropped McCauley. And Sorsby quick hit out to the edge and there's DeKeese Carter. And it's going to sit up this fourth and about eight, seven or eight. Now Rutgers showing some pressure. Sorsby running away. And setting the feet thrown to the end zone. Open man. Touchdown. Omar Cooper behind the Rutgers secondary. Well the thing that Indiana liked about Sorsby that set him apart in the quarterback battle his feet Cooper was a breakout star in week two for Indiana and one of his biggest plays as a Hoosier starts this homecoming game for Indiana and that's over the head of Jay Sean Benjamin the Rutgers touches for the first time with Gavin Wimsett at quarterback. And he has the benefit of the Big Ten's leading rusher, Kyle Manungai. And back to back carries for Manungai to start this game and fighting out on the edge. And Lewis Moore will not let him get that corner. First two plays on the shoulders of Manungai. And not going away from him. And he's swallowed up by Marcus Burris. Wimsett with his first pass set today, but he takes off and runs. And Wimsett twists his way to the 45. Three Menungai runs, one Wimsett run, and a couple of first downs for the Scarlet Knights. And back to the traditional ground game out to midfield with Menungai. And Christian Dremel had a good game last week against Michigan State. Six catches for 80 yards. Former walk on turn top target for Gavin Wimsett. This is a design quarterback run and everything on the ground behind that offensive line and three first downs. Whims it his first pass and he threads it in trying to avoid stuff over their head. Had some busts at times this year. And back to Manun guy and this drive keeps rolling forward. A six in the box in tight plus a safety over the top. And Menungai searching his way off the right side of the line. Rutgers ended up winning 27 24 to get a win away from bowl eligibility. And it whims it and a bullet over the middle but incomplete. Wims it running to the edge. A lead block from Aaron Young and whips it. This has been a run heavy drive. This will be the 12th play. And this is the 10th run. And Menunga weaving his way down to the 10. He catches the ball well, also. He's also very smart. And running back for Rutgers, a guy that Greg Shiano thinks will play in the NFL after Rutgers. And he runs into Casey and bounces off that tackle. 
Indiana scored on a fourth down on their first drive. A long sustained drive for Wimson and Rutgers and he bangs into a pile for a touchdown. A statement made by the front for Rutgers. The runner's knee was down and the ball was at the half yard line. The ball be placed at the half yard line. It's a quarterback sneak and right up the middle for Wimsett and he disappears. Did he get in this time? Yes he did. Touchdown for Wimsett. Yeah, he just fouled Zelinskis. Part of a 13 run play drive that just tied up the game for Rutgers. He knows how to handle his team and he will take a drop of sunshine and turn it into a day at the beach. Love that. Pretty easy to have credibility when you've won a couple of Super Bowls. Absolutely. Coaching in the NFL, Pat Flaherty. So Indiana's second drive starts with Jalen Lucas on the edge. Here's Sorsby out on the edge behind that support of Taven Jackson. He has a first down. Recognizing his his difficulties. And Sorsby to McCulley, two guys out there. He was right at the back of Camper, and two flags also come in. Interference. Offense, number six. 15 yard penalty, first down. And they run the triple option. A long pitch out to Jalen Lucas, and he's cut under by Longerbeam. Lucas can touch the ball without having to slow down. That was one of the points of emphasis this week. Another run for Sorsby, and he's banged down after a couple yard gain. This will be third and really, really long. Nice job by Mohamed Ture to track that from the inside out, and they're hurrying up, and they can snap this ball, and they're going to get an offsides penalty. I don't see a flag thrown. Yeah, no flag thrown. Oh, there there's one down bunch. here. Yeah, there are a bunch of guys on the field for Rutgers. They had about 15 guys on the field. And now now they threw it. They went hurry up offense. Defense with 12 and and the defense tried to change. Five yard penalty. It's third down. There's nobody coming in from the bench. So they can line right up. And now Rutgers is going to make a change. So if they get caught with their drawers down, here you go. Yeah, four extra players still on the field. Yeah. So it makes it a little more manageable for Sorsby, but down he goes. That's a really, really good job of coverage. And that sack for Ture, helped by the coverage. Rutgers, one of the best teams in the country in pass defense right now. State is not as strong as they have been, but Penn State's defense is playing pretty darn well. It'll be a good game. And it could eventually decide who goes to the Big Ten championship game. That result today. I think the best team in the Big Ten right now is, is Michigan. Uh, I, that's, I think most people feel the same way. First play of the second quarter, and it's blocked. That's Another good. big special teams play for Rutgers. Rodgers brings it all the way home off of the block and Eric Rodgers has Rutgers in front. See he's going to come through here to the top side. Oh that's nice. You can see him going right. Nobody blocked him. He because he wasn't blocked or even forced wide he's able to cut his angle down and get the perfect shot. Of course Eric Rodgers just got himself six points because of the special teams. It was Loyal that came in and blocked it. That's really smart. It's all about numbers. It was all about numbers in defense. It's all about numbers on special teams. And a wind in the face of Rutgers kicking off here. So this is a short kick. And they rally to the 30. So Brendan Sorsby getting the start today for Indiana quarterback. Let him on a touchdown drive, their first touch. And then their second drive led to that ball and that block and a big hit. Sorsby pops right back up. Throwing a little toughness right back to the air and off hands and incomplete. And there in man. And on third down a run for Holland. And he chews up a couple of yards. And Rutgers last time got home for the punt block. And this time Evans booms one inside the 20. A long running drive for a touchdown cap by Wimsett. And a blocked punt for a touchdown has Rutgers up the score. 
And Samuel Brown, who had a big game against Indiana last year with his first carry in this game. He'll get back there. He's not there yet. It was this game he got hurt in. He had 100 yards against the Hoosiers. And then his season never got going after that, out for the rest of the year. Back-to-back you know, -back carries for Brown. Third down and four. With Young into the game as the back. And it's wins it, and he's cut down. And movement. A couple flags come out. It's on Rutgers. Jalen Lucas back deep to get this punt. Appleby off the low snap, gets it away. And Indiana saying, get away from that, but it does take a Rutgers skip. The resell of those tickets over a thousand dollars. I've heard that. It's unbelievable. And Brendan Sorsby and the IU offense back out. Three and out after that led to the punt block for Rutgers. Back to the ground with Turner and bouncing off hits and not going very far. You'd be expecting that they're going to be in a zone here. And they are. It's a cover two. And the pressure coming to the backside. Sorsby gets it away, but out of bounds. And we don't talk about it much because people don't try him very much. Oh, nice punt. And the wind at his back, and too good of a punt. Too good. Made an offensive score and a special team score to lead by seven. And Benunka drills it across the middle, but off the hands of Lang and his tight ends. And Kirk Shiraka, the new offensive coordinator for Rutgers, has used him mostly as a pure pass catcher this year, as well as a blocker. Doing all those other things throughout his career. And it's Aaron Young to the edge, and Casey with his helmet flying off and all makes the play with a flag coming out. He's not a real holler guy, he's one of those guys who's kind of quiet. First one foul, first collar tackle, defense number 44. With a new starting quarterback, and on their homecoming. And back to the run game for Rutgers. And there's Manungai twisting his way toward a first down. And impressing your friends will also be spitting out that question and regurgitating it to him. Absolutely. Get you that answer here shortly. And Kyle Manungai, top rusher in the Big Ten, was down injured on the last play. So Jay Sean Benjamin comes in. So the top back out for now for Rutgers, both on this team and in the Big Ten. So it's the freshman Benjamin that comes in. And Benjamin runs right into Jones again. They really like his size in stopping the run. Wimsett runs away from Jones and makes this a third down and short. And Casey coming and Young running right into it. The exact spot for Casey. It's Wimsett who scored a touchdown to the ground earlier, and Lewis Moore stops him short. You talked about his positivity, the head coach for the Hoosiers. Even with the tough start, still believing. It's Soresby out to Jalen Lucas, and he's shoved out of bounds. First to a speedy foul. slot guy. Roughing the passer, defense number four. Contact to the head of the Jennings. quarterback. Lucas comes into the backfield, and it's a run with the more physical back. And into the second level with Trent Howlands. A good sequence for Indiana. Turnover on downs on defense. And back-to-back -back first downs with Lucas and Howlands. Trying to get this game tied. There's Lucas to the outside, slipping a tackle. And he's marked out inside the five. That's exactly what Indiana has to be able to do. Get him out in space. And Indiana trying to make that mirror image true on the scoreboard, too. Exactly. Get this game tied before halftime with four minutes to go. It's Sorsby pulling it. And the quarterback's in for a touchdown. <laughs> Was we need our quarterback to run the ball. So many ups and downs in this thing, and especially in the season. And you're, you're going to get your shot sooner or later. Uh, I think 
think a fair catch was called. Yeah, yeah it was called. <laughs> he studied every Matt Millen artifact in the wall. Yeah, both of them. <laughs> well, Manunga's back in the game here. He was injured on the last drive, and they go right to him. And he's really tough. You're right. Great to see the Big Ten leading rusher back out there after an injury scare. Here's Wimsett. He can move, and he's cut down right near that line to get. Aaron Casey saved a first down by a yard. If they give him the line, it's a first down. If they don't, and they doesn't look like they did, it's short by about six inches. The Rutgers has not worked quickly a lot today, but they do hear him, a young guy. Bangs it forward for a first down. And two and a half minutes until the break. Rutgers has three timeouts. And just shy of midfield with a fresh series here. Wims it given time underneath. And that play is stopped immediately after Langen, the tight end, made the catch. And a run heavy day for Rutgers. They've been about 75% run this year. And back to back passes and Langen can't haul that one in. Flag. And the flag does come out. Moore was bearing down on him and Moore can't believe that that flag came out. That's Pass a interference. Offense I'm staying out of this. I get yelled at by the officials more penalty. times. <laughs> Second down. That should have been a catch. Langen can't drop that ball. OK now they will look at a targeting. Number 20 targeted the wide receiver. Number 20 is disqualified from the ball game. The offensive pass interference foul and the targeting foul on the defense may offset. It's second down. So that goal is still in front of him of turning the season around, but they have to do it shorthanded. So those offsetting penalties bring it back to the 44 yard line. Oh, he's got him on a swing. And oh, oh, what a catch by Benjamin! A better throw and he's still running. That was a great catch by Benjamin with one hand. But if you hit him in stride, there was nobody out there. So Benjamin spotted down after the first down. And back to Benjamin, and he's into the arms of Carr. On second and long. Wims it yeah. just a little too high. Rutgers trying to take the lead before halftime, but a third and forever. Wims it with a collapsing pocket. Down he goes. Excellent job by that Indiana front. So it goes the other way. So Rutgers gets a free possession before halftime, plus they get the ball out of the locker room. And Wibzit can't connect with Jackson. He had him. And it's been a run heavy first half for Rutgers. Their first drive, they ran it 13 times. Wibzit punched it in for a touchdown. And it's Wimsett with a lead block from Manungai slipping through, and he has a first down and goal before the half. Rutgers has all three timeouts, and they'll take their first one here. And one of Wimsett's favorite targets is Christian Dremel. He's down in the slot, bottom side of your screen. And Manungai is torn down by Carter. A great get off by the DN for Indiana. Exactly right. And normally they don't do that, they normally wait. 13 seconds and one timeout for Rutgers. Looking for a go ahead score off a special teams turnover. If he throws, he has to get rid of it quickly. He does get it away, but it sails over everybody. Wins it to throw. Looking for the lead. I it's Kinder Reed, not to the end zone. Now time Rutgers out. has to take a timeout, and they do get it with three seconds left. Dremel made the catch, but never got to the goal line. So Rutgers with Jay Patel will try a 21 yard field goal. They try to take a lead into the halftime locker room. Not an easy angle from the, from the 11 yard line. 
Patel from 21 yards out for the lead for Rutgers, and he does drill it. And there's a flag. There is a flag. Came in late on the far sideline. And the clock is at zeros. Offsides against Indiana. They'll decline that thing and move on. Here we go in the second half from Bloomington with Rutgers bringing it out on a touchback. Before we start the second half, here's Elise. Just talked to head coach Tom Allen. He said as for his quarterback, Brendan Soresby, he did some good things, made some plays with his arm, made some plays with his legs. And I, I think he's thrown the ball pretty well as, as well. And let's see if that is the recipe again for Rutgers. If they're just going to pound it like they did on their first touchdown drop. Looks like it on the first play. Flag comes out. Helmets come off. A rugby scrum breaks out. It's still moving forward. And that turned into a fist fight real quickly on the first play of the that, second half. This is what I was talking about in the first half. This, they, this happens all the time. The nun guy does not go down. He keeps on churning his legs, and then they get First behind and start pushing. Illegal hands in the face. Defense number 96. An outstanding first play. The nun guy, he's tough. And so free first down for Rutgers with the hands to the face. And there's Manungai right into that scrum again. Earned every last bite after 148 yards. Manungai is the lead blocker for Wimsett who cuts inside and he's turned upward. And if the play calling so far today has been an indicator this will be a run. And it is. And it's Manungai for a first down. But mostly these two guys in the field in the backfield right now. And that's Manungai into a crowded box. Wins it to throw. And he whistles it out to the edge, but incomplete. Manungai stretching out to the edge with a nasty stiff arm, but he won't get away on the second one. And five on the play clock. And they do snap it, and Wimson buzzes it in there for a first down. On first down, Manungai, shoulder pads driving forward, and the pile plows ahead with them for a first down again. And Rutgers scored on a long drive on their first touch of the game. Mostly running the ball behind Wimson Manungai. And if those two tag teaming in the run game again, Rutgers can get another first down before a touchdown. And it's Manungai slicing it back. There's the first down, and he stopped at the one. Rutgers looking for a two-score lead right here. And Tom Allen needs a timeout. We get Jackson and the rest of the guys set before first and goal, and whims it, burrowing his way on the quarterback sneak. And it will depend. Did he get there? He did. Touchdown. Gavin Wimsett gives Rutgers a two-score lead. So Wimsett with the quarterback sneak for the touchdown. That's a big part of why Rutgers has a two-score lead. And one more win would get them to bowl eligibility in six wins. It'll be their first six-plus win season since 2014. There's no doubt that this would be a milestone win for Rutgers. Look, and Brendan Sorsby and Indiana spoil that and start a season turned around their way. Sorsby going deep down the field and Camper couldn't hold on. Now he's doing it to every quarterback in the Big Ten. And that's broken up. Back-to-back -back plays from the secondary, Tyreen Powell. The Rutgers out of halftime, touchdown, chewing up a lot of clock. And then they force a punt, and Evans needs some help, and he won't get it. But he has gotten better and better and better every year. Right now, playing left tackle in the Big Ten is not an easy task. And they're running right up the middle with Menungai. So, Alan Pierce, a little bit away from that play up on the top of that formation. Yeah, well, so what you what you need to know, so first of all, for him to bend is not easy. He's 6'9". He's 
So you you want to be a, a knee bender, not a waist bender. And um, he has worked at this so hard. I've watched him in practice. I've I've been down there to watch him a few times, and he has come a long way. He's playing pretty darn good football right now, and he's very long, hard to get around. Well, the Nung guy rides Linnell Carr out toward a first down. Needed the 30, got right to the 30. You said it right. Down. Yeah, you said it right. He rode him. So, and, and, and he stays on top of him, right? And here he is again. So, He's getting into him and then he stays on him. That's remarkably better than what he's been. Can, can I go back to what you said about being a knee bender, not a back bender? Absolutely. It's a lot like helping your friends move when they move apartments, right? <laughs> yeah. You have to pick up the couch, bend with your knees, not your back. If you can be a knee bender and there, so, and get ready for, for the draft and all that stuff where you're looking at different players, that's one of the things you look for. How flexible are there you know, when they have that bend? Oh, Manungai, really nice cut inside. Yes, even some impressive two and three yard runs. Absolutely. That one, that one right there, it got shut down really quick. And he's, you're going to see him, he's going to make a nice little jump cut in here. See, he's coming quick. The guy is right there on Bowman. And then he just jumps to the side, lets it clear, shows patience and then aggression. That is really well done. Matt Manungai is a guy that runs like he's trying to prove everybody wrong. Yeah, that's the way Isaiah Pacheco was, still is. And they, they're, you know, they're very similar. Pacheco, of course, now the Kansas City Chiefs. And Greg Schiano said he sees a little bit of Ray Rice, a former Rutgers running back, then to the NFL, and Pacheco in his current back, Manunga. And there's Wimsett to the edge, and a third down is coming. So this is a big play coming for the Indiana defense, chasing two scores. Trying to get the ball back in the hands of Brendan Soresby. And so you saw the difference right there. The difference in that play from previous plays when they're running that to the top side is the safety came down really fast. He came down really fast and he got in on the play and he sets up this third down. A short handed Indiana defense. Their captain Noah Pierre was injured in the first quarter. And then Lewis Moore was ejected for targeting late in the first half also. Carter standing up on the pass rush and a wobbly throw is dropped. Wimsett put it in a window for Washington, but drops and it's fourth down. It looked wobbly. I almost thought it got tipped. Maybe it did get tipped. I can't tell. Yes, it was. That's exactly what happened. Now Marcus Burris. Made that thing wobbly. Washington did a great job trying to come back to that ball, but couldn't quite get his hands on. You know, Burris is a player that Tom Allen raved about yesterday. Said that when he gets ticked off, he is really, really good. I would keep him mad all the time. Just find ways. <laughs> That's what Indiana's defense is looking for a little bit more of right now is some of that animosity that Marcus Burris brings up front. I asked Barry Sanders to my my opinion the best runner I've ever seen in my life. I said about his vision and he said I see the same thing you see. I can just get there. Hmm. And the guys who can get there. They're special. The nun guy. The nun guy's seeing things and he's getting where he needs to get to. I take it not a coincidence that you're bringing up a guy like Barry Sanders with Manungai? Nope. Completely different running styles, though. Yeah, I mean, but their vision's very similar. And it was Holland on the first carry for Indiana as they try to come back. They led this game 7 to nothing. They've been either tied or playing from behind since. And the running game does get them into a manageable third down. And so at, at the three minute mark in the third quarter, this is a significant third down right here. You don't want to turn the ball back over this far back in your territory. This is a, this is a big first down. Or third down, I should say. You know, Brendan Soresby getting the start today. If you just flipped us over, they've been Taven Jackson for a while. They flip flopped quarterbacks last week and against Maryland. And on this third down, it's Howlands. With three straight runs, 
And again, Indiana some breathing room out of the shadow of their own end zone. And they're doing the same exact thing that Rutgers is doing. They're just going to grind it. And they're going to say, look, we're going to run the football, and we're trusting in our offensive line. We like our matchup against your defensive front. Let's see if you can stop us. And they got the big bruising back, Trent Holland from the blue collar town of Joliet, Illinois, back there again. And they keep feeding him. He keeps going too. He keeps moving. That's just that's just power. They're gonna watch this. They're coming off the ball. He's coming right down. Just there's where he's hit. And now they track all these yards, like yards after contact. That's your yak yards, right? He just pulled himself forward for another two yards. So instead of second and eight, it's second and six. And first pass, maybe not. There goes Sorsby off a tackle, and that's the threat that earned Sorsby this chance today. And that eventually got him this job after he lost it out of fall camp and into the season. He was announced as the backup in week three. A flare out to Lucas, Smart. and he's shoved out from behind. So there's one of those space touches for Lucas. Absolutely, that's what you're looking for. Get rid of the ball. They're going to back off of him, and they're going to play with a cushion. You're going to take advantage of the cushion. Matt, there's Taven Jackson in this kind of emotional and mental support role now and being ready if needed if Sorsby goes down. Absolutely. And those roles were the other way around for about a month. And Sorsby on the pitch. Back to back touches for Lucas. And all those yards for Lucas on that series moving the chains. And we got a Rutgers guy down again. It is a big day in Lincoln football and a number one versus number two volleyball match. And you can watch both on Big Ten Network after this. Soresby out to the corner. And there's nothing there. The corner Max Melton had help from Wesley Bailey running him down. Yeah, Bailey did a nice job. He was able to get the edge on Bailey, but Bailey forced him deep enough that they, they lost yardage on that. Bailey's limping too. Everybody's limping on that <laughs> defense. Which is interesting. Rutgers defense has not been on the field very much today. Indiana offense held the ball for about 10 minutes until late in this quarter. This could be the final play of the quarter. Let's see if they snap it. They do. It's a, and it's a trick play. And it, the trick didn't work. And McCauley is roped out of bounds. Dixon did a great job of not biting on that. And it's a loss of, uh, of yardage. Really well done by Flip Dixon. And that looked like a Rutgers defense that had watched a lot of the Michigan tape. McCulley threw a touchdown to Jalen Lucas on a trick play in that game last week. And Sorsby to start the fourth quarter out to Lucas. The result will be a punt. And Christian Dremel rolls into that catch. And Greg Schiano said that that win last week reminded him of the first time that he was the head coach at Rutgers. They beat Vanderbilt in a similar comeback in 2004. I'm hoping that that win last week can be a similar launching point. Is he doing it? 64 snaps this week, playing most of the game here today. And he said the injury was like a bomb went off in his knee. That's how many ligaments were torn? Here's Wimsett breaking into the open field. Gavin Wimsett down the sideline. Wimsett trying to beat the defense. And all the way in for a touchdown, Gavin Wimson. He's become louder. He's become looser. And this go around is the quarterback for Rutgers in a Big Ten win last week. I'm trying to push Rick Rutgers to his sixth win this week. So Indiana in a big hole early in this fourth quarter. So Indiana's got to work fast now. And Sorsby handing off on the first play of this drive. It's funny because Howland's had success, I and mean, he's moved the football. And here he is again in the screen game. McCauley sets up a block for him. Fast as they can be, and they're going with this hurry up. 
The swords be out quickly and juggled by Jalen Lucas. Passing formation. Soresby to Lucas, and that looked just like the last play. Does that mean he's the guy the rest of the way? Right. Tom Allen said, no, he's still got to prove it that he's going to be our quarterback the rest of the season. And so plays like that, you see Muhammad Dre coming out. So it's man, but they got to put somebody on the quarterback's feet. Soresby. Meaning meaning you have to be able to uh, have a, a, a guy specifically for your quarterback. On fourth and five, Indiana trying to keep the game alive. It's a shot. And that's incomplete. And flags stay in pockets. So Soresby took the big hit. And targeting called on Jameer Wright Collins. He's out of the game. And Soresby and Indiana continue. Another shot play. Had a step. And the recovery came late from Eric Rodgers. You know, Rodgers has a touchdown in this game on special teams. And this is Holland between the tackles bringing up third down. You're talking about the secondary for Rutgers. You got Robert Longerbeam, who's been the best defensive back for Rutgers at this point. Yep. Max Melton, who has an NFL type skill set. And then Rodgers scoring and breaking up passes today. On third down, Lucas has popped. On that play across the middle on Jalen Lucas. No foul yeah. For targeting. Yeah, fourth I down. thought he I thought he led with his shoulder. Contact chest. That's what it looked like. But of course, everything happens so fast. He's made excellent reads. He's been able to run through some tackles. And now he's looking for a statement drive to try to put this game out of reach. There's one about chicken salad in there, too. Yeah, there is. Yeah. And it's first down and five after the offside on Indiana. Wims it with the three rushing touchdowns. The latest was an 80 yard hit. And taking the entire play clock and feeding it inside. You know, for Gavin Wims it, this is a day that. Here's Brown between the tackles. And this will be a third down. I think that bodes well for Rutgers. On a third down, it's Brown, and he finishes forward with a first down. There were seven and a half minutes on the clock. You could just about book it that they were going to take a lead, get out of there without even having to score another touchdown. And Brown stretching to the outside, got free of Casey, and Brown using all that bruising power. Six in the box plus a safety. And Carter chases it down from the backside after a short run for Brown. And no secret about what Rutgers is trying to do. And after Wimsett's big touchdown run, last drive extended the lead. And it's Brown barreling through arm tackles for another first down with the flag in. Legal block in the back. Offense number nine. Ten yard penalty. Oh, they stay with the run with Brown, and Carter smothers it. So Rutgers can work this all the way down to inside four and a half minutes before getting it back to the Hoosiers. When you think about where Rutgers has been. That's a good way to put it that they won their way in. They had, they had, uh, High, uh, what do you call it? Academic progress. Academic support. progress. Yeah. So they they had they had the grades to be able to make it. Yeah, that's why they were a five-win COVID replacement team in their bowl game in 2021, which was valuable probably for this year, in that you have you can develop your young players. You get you get. You know, three weeks of more of practice, and you get more reps, and you get to see the guys do things or teach them things. Well, it was really important for Greg Schiano and Rutgers to get there today, which it looks like they're going to do if they can hang on in the final four minutes and 14 seconds. 
Because that schedule that's coming up for Rutgers, Matt. Oh, it's not easy at all. Ohio State at home, at Iowa, at Penn State, and against Maryland. It's like, what can our guys do, and let's make it work within our scheme. And Ture came free. Sorsby swings it out to Holland. And Holland's been pretty heavily involved in this game in the second half for Indiana. He's close to a first down. Yeah, I like him. I like his running style. He's a big physical guy. He can put the game on his shoulders, and he catches the ball well. Sorsby away from pressure, using the legs, and he slides down. Back to Holland. And I told you before how he's from Joliet, Illinois. That is uh, Rudy Rudiger's hometown. Subject, subject to the movie Rudy. Yeah, there you go. So coming from a place with good football history. Holland, the running back, and that's knocked down on the pass for Swordsby. So they're just playing safe right now. So what they're going to give Indiana is underneath throws. And they're not going to let you get over the top of them, right? So they're not going to let you get deep. And they're going to make you have to drive the field in the last three minutes and 20 seconds. They'll rush with four and keep everything in front of them. Here's the four man rush. Sorsby stepping away underneath to Carter. We're within three at halftime, but have not scored since then. And Rutgers has outscored him 14 0 from that point on. Third down for Brendan Sorsby at quarterback. And a run play with Holland, and he keeps trucking downhill for a first down. It's smart with Holland, and they're running right at it. They have a different defensive front in there with Troy Rainey inside. They're not as big, and they're and they're loosening up their defense. So you run right at it. And oh, that was almost great. undercut. That would have gone to the house for Max Melton. He collided with James Bamba. That's that's what I'm talking about with Melton. See, very few, very few teams have tried him, right? And because he waits on stuff. He's really a smart player. That was that was really well, really well done. And out to the edge, Sorsby completes. And gets it to Aaron Steinfeld. And tight end. But play before that was Melton. Route. Yeah, he did the jump route. That was a great job. He breaks it up. He had a chance at picking that thing. Teray around the edge. Sorsby away from Lewis and pointing out blockers. And he runs out of bounds. So he stops the clock, moves the chains. Down to the last two minutes. So defensively, if you're Rutgers, you're saying, look, just don't give the score up fast. It doesn't matter if they score. Let's just make them earn it, right? Uh, timeout for Rutgers. Greg Shiano right in the hip pocket of the linesman. And one timeout left for Rutgers. And a few minutes away from their sixth win, which would make them bowl eligible. Also make them three and two in the Big Ten for the first time ever. Sorsby shot play. McCulley has it knocked away. Max Melton with another play on the ball. Yeah, he is playing it really well. So this time he's going to play outside position, right? So you're going to make the ball. You're going to have to go through the defender to get to the ball. He does a nice job at the top. You see how he did that? The ball at the point, right? It's up high. A better throw inside would have been a, would have been a score probably. And there's Dekeese Carter for a first down for Indiana. Max Melton, Max Melton is just a smart football player, never out of position, just does good things. Some Rutgers fans have made the trip. Sorsby. Uh, given some room to run, he fakes out Lewis and takes a slide down. He did fake out Lewis, but Lewis did a good job of making him cut back inside to where his help was. And so he was able to be, well, he went down, but there was a tackler right there. Now late into the clock, Soresby back shoulder incomplete. 
EJ Williams who's back healthy today has been out for several weeks for Indiana since week two. I'm surprised they didn't go to him earlier more. Loyal was right there on the coverage. Approaching the final minute here's Sorsby. And the end zone and that's right at the back of Robert Longerbeam. Longerbeam great. So what you're seeing right now is everybody's covered right. There's no separation from these receivers. They are just running with these receivers and the defenders are making plays. The ball's there accurate. Just good defense. Matt I liked what the Scarlet Knight mascot was doing there. Some mixing up stuff in a bowl. I think he was preempting full eligibility coming. Sorsby bouncing around back to the end zone. Another one broken up. Longer beam with another play in the end zone, and that'll do it. Rutgers is going to be bowl eligible. And they earned it. So after that emotional win last week, Greg Schiano may or may not have been crying. He told us no. It was rain in his face after the big comeback against Michigan State put them in this spot to get to bowl eligibility today. He told his team, yes, feel good about what you did. You should. We've been working for this for a long time. But also, do not fall victim to human nature. Oh, no. Flush it and move on. That's all, right, all you ready? can do. And uh, I went down to Rutgers for their Tuesday practice. And it was a pretty vociferous day of practice they were, they were not uh, not letting him going to sit on their laurels that's for sure and that was the point with that quote from Greg Shiano was Absolutely. you think you got it made you think that we're coming or we've arrived that's when a humbling happens and they did not let that happen especially in the second half yeah, not at all and this is a this is a well coached team I mean this is a this Greg Shiano has a good staff Greg Shiano is an excellent coach. He will get more out. Whatever you give him, he's going to get something out of him. It looked like they were trying to give him a little bath. Ah, uh, yeah, that might not be a good idea in the middle of the season. <laughs> Still a long way to go. Four games to go. And Chiano's running away from anything his guys have up their sleeve with a Gatorade bath. And Rutgers officially bowl eligible. And they are to six plus wins for the first time since 2014.